HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Hello and welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to fill you in with what's happening in town. On this edition of HCAM News, we have scenes from this summer's Concerts on the Common. We'll take a look at the Bay Path Humane Society Pet of the Week. Ashland Allegiant Baseball officially wrapped up their season and Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider. But first, the Hopkinton Public Library is excited to announce they are now open on Saturdays. The Hopkinton Library celebrated their first Saturday open. The library will now be open to the public Saturdays, 10 a.m. until 4 p.m. Today's event is just a celebration of finally having the library open for Saturdays in the summer, which is something that families in Hopkinton have been begging for for many years, and we're happy to finally be able to do that. Slowly but surely, we're adding the hours that people have asked for over all the years. Um, I know working families, uh, Saturdays are a big deal for co coming to the library in the midst of all your other errands and we're happy finally to be able to offer that to them. So we decided that in doing that we would give a little celebration and just have a little food. There's a treasure hunt that's going to be in collaboration with the library and the historical society I believe it is and we're going to rededicate the time capsule bench that the 300th committee has given to us. Um, so we'll have some people say a few words about that in a little while. Uh, other than that, uh, we're, just, we're just happy that we're finally here and open on Saturday. So this is our very first summer Saturday that we're open. We were very fortunate this year um, in the budget cycle, we heard a lot of demand from town residents for more hours now that we have a beautiful new facility and we were able to get funding for that. So historically, we have been closed on Saturdays in the summer um, and that's been a real problem for working parents, you know, people who work in general, um, you know, having trouble getting to the library on the weekends just for themselves or with kids. So there's been a lot of demand for summer Saturdays and now we will be open at the same hours, 10 to 4, as every other Saturday throughout the year, which is very exciting for us. Um, so today we're having a little bit of refreshments for a celebration. Um, we're having a time capsule bench rededication uh, that is now living in the library. And um, there's a historical scavenger hunt that is starting from the building and sort of a drop in basis this morning. So we're trying to keep it fun and, and festive. This is the first time we've been open on a summer Saturday ever, as far as I know. I have, you know, not that much knowledge, way, way, way back, but we're very excited to be able to do it. We know that it's been something the community has really wanted. Um, so as part of what we're doing to celebrate today, we have this time capsule bench, which was built as part of the 300th anniversary celebrations for permanent installation in the library. This is a time capsule, um, and our thought was that it would be hidden in plain view so that people in 50 years would know just where to look so that they can open up um, and see what's in there. It, as one of the things that we did during the um, year of the 300th was that we were able to excavate time capsules that were in the um, cornerstone of what's now the Korean church, and it was really thrilling to open them up, but it was quite a process to dig them out. And so this will be much easier in 25 or 50 years, and uh, you know, due to the um, water leaks in Town Hall and this going into storage and 
the um, construction of the library. This now finally, a couple of years after it was built, has found its home. So I couldn't be more thrilled. Uh, John Foster is um, the local artisan who built the bench for us. And underneath are um, three time capsules. One to be opened in 100 years and two to be opened in 50 years. And they're all labeled um, Mike Whalen made a special key for opening them um, and he sealed them up and so the key is embedded in the bench as well. So this is locally cut sherry and um, we milled it up, uh, dried it and uh, I just, it was an honor for me to do it for the town. I just hope the glue holds. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that was a lot of, a lot of fun, a lot of work for a year and it's really nice to just um, re remember that today because it's been a little bit of time. So we're so grateful to the library for um, being the keeper of this, and I hope that people will sit on it and enjoy it and crack it open in, um, in about two years. So thank you. So um, I built this bench uh, in honor of the 300th anniversary uh, for the town of Hopkinton. It is made from uh, local cherry that was cut by Joe Regan, who is a resident here in town. And um, it was a lot of fun. Available for adoption at Bay Path Humane Society is a one-year-old female cat named Willow. She is a sweet, quiet, playful cat who prefers a house without other animals. Here's a look. Her name is Willow. She was adopted out as a kitten here and returned. They, they, they kept her for a year, wanting her to get along with uh, their other cat, and it didn't work. So um, she's back now, and as you can see, she's kind of shy. Um, however, normally, I think it's because you've got a camera and she, you're standing sort of near her. She's a little spooked by that, but normally she comes out and she, just a little while ago, was rolling around on the ground for me um, and letting me rub her belly, which is an unusual thing for a cat. Most cats don't like that. Um, so she's only one year old, and like I said, she was a kitten here a year ago. Um, she is incredibly sweet, likes her food quite a bit, um, and well, I was playing with her before. Let's see if she'll come out for this. Um, and <laughs> really should be the only cat in the household. And she just needs somebody who can take the time to let her slowly adjust to a new house. And then she's a love bug after that. And as she, she's playing, so she's still kind of kitteny, the playing. Come on, come out. She's also one of the staff and volunteer favorites because she's so sweet. But a lot of people don't, don't end up coming into this room to see her. Um, they usually head straight to the kittens. Um, and I was asking the volunteers earlier today, who should I, who should I do this, this with? And they were, everybody was like Willow, um, because she just needs people to, to see how sweet she is. Yeah. Coming up next on HCAM News, Post 77 Legion Baseball wrapped up their season. Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider, and we will take you to Concerts on the Common. A whole lot more coming up. Stay tuned. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and healthcare services. All right, workshop series in July. We should shoot a promo for it. Yeah, but what's the concept? It has to be cool. Is this cool? Is this cool? Is this cool? This is cool. have what it takes. Will you make a difference? Always an adventure.
police and fire working together. Utilizing the latest technology. Do you have what it takes? Welcome back to HKM News. Ashland Legion Baseball competed hard in the playoffs in their mission to advance to the state tournament. Let's take a look at how the postseason went. Post 77 defeated Natick 6-3 in the first round of the playoffs, which led to a matchup on Tuesday, July 24th with Medford. It was 2-1 Medford heading into the bottom of the third. Post 77 was able to put together some runs. Lewis likes to go the other way, so the big gap between third and short. It's a piece of this one, slow roller up the middle, that's going to get through to right field. Bates around to score and Hornung's going to be held up. It's a 4-2 post-77 lead. An RBI single for Lewis Rossi. Dude, he's looking very good. Breaking pitch up the middle, past the reach of the first baseman. Hornung around to score and no play will be made, everybody's going to be safe. A 5-2 lead for post-77. Four runs score in the inning, and that led to a post-77 6-4 victory. Tom Nappy here with Ben Thomas and Jackson Hornung. Guys, another tremendous game, another tremendous playoff win. Uh, ben, you had a great day today, uh, going one for two with a couple of walks, scoring a couple of runs. Uh, could you just talk about your performance out there? Um, I was seeing the ball very well today, and I was just trying to see it deep, and uh, didn't give me many strikes at first. Got two walks on four, eight balls, so, but... Uh, I was able to get runners going and produce some runs for our team. It was a good day. And you guys seem to have a lot of fun out there as usual today. Uh, and it just seems to be such good chemistry. What's it like playing with this group? Uh, I mean, it's awesome. We all like, know each other very well. Um, we're a really tight team. Um, we always going out after to eat dinner after games and stuff like that. Um, we know each other all well. And we've been, I'm playing Jackson for a couple years now. And uh, we just have a blast. We're just having fun. And uh, as long as we keep having fun, I hope we keep winning. So. Absolutely, and uh, Jackson, you had a pretty good performance out there as well. You got hit by a pitch, which drove in a run and also made a couple of good defensive plays, uh, and you've been uh, consistent all season long and uh, so good at that shortstop position for post-77. Uh, could you talk about your performance out there today and uh, also the team as a whole? Uh, well, my first play of the game, I kind of botched, so you know, I wanted to get it back for Gus, so I made a couple plays for him, but it, you know, it's always for my team. I just want to go out there and win and uh, keep winning. So. And then just uh, the whole team played great today. We hit the ball uh, when we needed to. We got that pitcher out early, got uh, some runs with the bases loaded. So, you know, just doing the little things that help us win. And uh, can you talk about Luke Gossifson's performance out there today? He had a battle uh, through a couple of innings, but he got the job done out there today, and he pitched pretty well. Yeah, he did. He pitched well the first few innings, got into a little uh, pickle in one of the innings there, but he ended up only letting up one run, striking out. Most of them, I think, I don't know if it was two or three, but you know, he just gets the job done when he needs to, and he throws hard all the time, so he's great. What's it like to be a part of this group? Oh, it's great. You know, I came in last year, and everyone's just so tight. Everyone loves hanging out with each other, so I think that just helps the chemistry and helps us play better throughout the season. Well, guys, you put yourself in a very good position with uh, rain coming, so hopefully we'll see you in the state tournament. If not, we'll have some more uh, district playoff fun. Congratulations on a great victory out there tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Tom Nappy here with Louis Rossi and Sean Jewett. Guys, a uh, tremendous game out there today. Uh, good victory over a good Medford team, and you put yourself in a good place uh, with the rain coming. This could be the last uh, district playoff game there is until the state tournament. Uh, could you just talk about your team's performance out there today? Well, you know, we all went out there with the mindset of winning. We knew we had to win. We know the circumstances for the rest of the week, and uh, we all went out together, and, you know, we all played for each other, and... Honestly, that prevailed. We went down a little in the first, but we got everyone's spirits back up for the end, and that really helped you know, push through. And, uh, Lewis, you had a great game out there. Uh, you went one for three at the plate. You drove in a run. Uh, could you talk about your performance out there today? Uh, well, did all right, I guess. Uh, I think, you know, the key for, like, the whole team was uh, just to, like, be patient. Their first pitcher was a little wild, so uh, we actually ended up getting him out of the game in, like, the third or fourth inning because uh, he ended up walking a lot of guys. So um, be patient. And then when I got up, they had just brought in a new pitcher. So 
I just timed him up. I got a, like an inside fastball, and I didn't hit it that great, but snuck through the hole and drove in a run. And that inning was like a four-run four run inning, probably the reason why we won. So it felt great. And you guys seem to have kind of a loose feel out there, but really step it up when you need to. Uh, can you just talk about what it's like to play with this group? You know, it's awesome. Like, I've never been on a team as good and as together as everyone on this team. We all play together, and it's just incredible. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. We all just, you know, all of us here just want to show up, have fun in the summer. And for us, that means showing up to this park and playing baseball and beating teams. And that's pretty much it. And I have to ask, uh, how was it uh, to be able to pitch the other day? That was fun. I mean, I haven't pitched since uh, three or four years ago, but uh, got out there. I couldn't really throw strikes at first, so I had to throw sidearm, and somehow that worked. So that was, that was fun. I'm glad. I got two strikeouts, a little surprised, but it's a lot of fun. I probably won't get to do it again, so I'm going to enjoy it. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you got through a solid inning, so uh, well, hopefully many more playoff games to come. Uh, congratulations to you guys. You've been great all season long, and uh, we look forward to more playoff baseball. Yeah, thank you. On Wednesday, July 25th, Ashland took on Lowell in Lowell and fell 5-2. to two. And then on the following day, Ashland fell in walk-off fashion to Lowell in Bill Ricca 5-4 to, four, to end an incredible season with 16 wins and six losses. Congratulations to the 2018 Post 77 squad on a terrific run. Congratulations on a fantastic run to coach Derek Johnson and the rest of the Post 77 staff and players. The Hopkinton Parks and Recreation Concerts on the Common is in full swing this summer Here's a look at some of this summer's performances and a glimpse at upcoming concerts on the Common. said, Bobby, you can throw away your pill. Grab a handful of corners, let the jukebox cure your will. Cause all my friends are bopping the blues, it must be going round. All my friends are bopping the blues, and it must be going round. I love you, baby, but it must be rhythm bound. You 
know that jitterbug bit me. I don't feel the pain. Has anybody seen my lady? This living alone is driving me crazy. Oh, you don't know the shape I'm in. I'm gonna go down by the water. Oh, I'm not gonna jump in on no, no. I'll just be looking for my makeup. And they tell me that that's where she's been. Money, honey. Please, baby. Money, honey. A money, honey, if you want to get along. I said, a money, honey, if you oh, want to get along. Oh, please, baby, just once. A money, honey, if you want to get along with me. He's the man that we all used to fear. Now the people call the sweet papa with a deer. Stronger than Samson, I declare. Till the brown skinned mama bobbed his hair. And Big Bad Bill, he don't fight no more. Does the dishes and he mops the floor. Well, you spend this evening just looking for a fight. Now he's got to see his mama every night. Big Bad Bill is sweet. William now Woke up last night Half past four Six women knocking on my door Everybody's trying to be my baby Everybody's trying to be my baby Everybody's trying to be my baby now A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channels. Here to tell you all about it is Matt Clark with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the HCAM Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and here's what's happening this week on HCAM. On Friday, August 3rd at 5 p.m., folk singer and songwriter Peg Espinosa performs her songs inspired by her life on a new episode of Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. On Monday, August 6th at 8 p.m., Tom Nappy takes a look at the library's presentation of A Life of Sorrow on a new edition of HCAM News Focus. On Tuesday, August 7th at 6.30 p.m., the Hopkinton Board of Selectmen's meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Wednesday, August 8th at 7 p.m., Margie and Lisa are back and invite you to join the conversation on a new episode of The Margie and Lisa Show, live on HCAM TV. And on Thursday, August 9th at 8 p.m., the Roy Scott Big Band performs in this week's edition of the Concerts on the Common. And on HCAM Ed, the Ashland Legion Baseball vs. Waltham game will air. If you want to know more about all of HCAM's shows before they air, then head over to hcam.tv slash connect, where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider Newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. That's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and as always, thanks for watching. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website for the latest happenings in our community and check out the new Hopkinton community calendar to take a look at upcoming events in town. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care and enjoy the rest of your day.
to the Harbors Parade. Well, this was kind of an exciting year for me because the parade committee finally let me be a judge. So I'm, I'm the one that you can complain about when we give out the award. Also want to thank my daughter Colleen who did all the heavy lifting this year. We're going to give out the third place award first. And this is going to go to a group that I think this is their second year coming here today, so it's, uh, we wanted to recognize that. Under pressure, second place. This was a this was a nice uh, parade or parade float. Uh, Jenny's Dollhouse. They put a lot of work into that one. Who's Jenny? The next award is going to be the most patriotic award. And this was a big float. This was a, a string of floats. We're going to give this one to Scott Septic for the red, white, and blue. You're Scott Septic. Look, look, look. Hold up. Wait, I mean, you can't get away that easy. The next trophy, this is a big one. This is the children's trophy. We're going to give this to the Jaws for Orpah. All right, I'm going to get the middle of you two guys. Hold the trophy. Alright. The next one, we give this out every year. This is the most historical trophy. There was a lot of competition for this year, but we're going to give it to Skip Irvine. Yeah. That is a nice pickup truck.